Somebody shout with me. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. I want to direct your attention to the book of Isaiah, the 36th chapter. There may be some extensive reading, but it will be to our benefit and our exhortation. Isaiah 36, beginning at verse 1. Now in the fourteenth year, King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and conquered them. I want you to get a picture of this with me, if you will. Here's a powerful uh, foreign king heading up a, a vast army of trained killers. And he has began to march towards Jerusalem. And he has taken over everything in his path. He even conquered the northern kingdom of, of Israel, took the cities, the fortified cities, and conquered them. Now, can you imagine with me waking up in the morning in their hostile army that has marched through, destroying everything in its path, overtaking, taking captive all nations in its path, and now they're encamped around your city, the city of Jerusalem. And the northern kingdom has been taken and only Judah remains. Can God let this happen? Well, Christ come down through the tribe of Judah, so I don't think so. Can you say amen? amen. But they're uh, surrounded by this vast army that they have no power against, and uh, they are in a desperate, life-changing situation. Next verse, please. Now it came to pass, and the king of, uh, of Assyria sent Rishaka <laughs> from Lachish to Jerusalem unto the king of Hezekiah with a what great army. And he stood by the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fullest field. The audacity of this king and his bullying tactics. He actually walks right into their water supply, uh, an area where he's elevated and can speak down to the city. Then came forth unto him Eliakim, Hezekiah's son, which was over the house. And Shebna the scribe, and Joash, his sap son, the recorder. Rapshaka, that name Rapshaka is not actually the name of a person, it's a title. He's the messenger of the king of Assyria. And he's been sent out with a message. So Rapshaka said unto them, Say ye now to Hezekiah, Thus said the great king, the king of Assyria, what confidence is this wherein thou trusted? I want to know why you still hang on. You look at my record. The king of Assyria has overtaken everyone that he set out to overtake. He's taken captive all of them that he wanted to take captive. And now look at the army around here, all this army. You are not able to stand against God. Tell me, what are you depending on? Where do you go? Who do you depend on when you have no strength, no ability within yourself, no help from the outside, and now you are under siege? What confidence do you have? And whom do you have confidence that you would dare to rebel against this force that's coming against you. Where is this confidence coming from? Next verse. I say, sayest thou, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? You are talking stuff. I hear you little Christians out there, you little people of God talking about we are prepared for war, but all I see is just a bunch of words. I don't see nothing else but a bunch of words. Lo, thou 
trust is in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt, where, whereon if a man leans, it will go into the, his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all that trusted in him. For one instance, this messenger of the king of Assyria, who symbolizes the enemy, the devil, he spoke something that's true. In all of his vast line, he said, listen, if you're going to depend on that broken reed, Egypt, Egypt typifies the world. How many of you know that when you're under siege, you can expect very little help from worldly sources? Oh, y'all not hear what I'm saying? There are trials and tribulations, ladies and gentlemen, that a big loan from a bank won't help me in. Having friends to come by and give me a high five and kudos won't help me. There are struggles I'm facing right now that goes beyond human ability to help me. Do I have any witnesses here now? Maybe I'm just preaching to, to Williams today. But I cannot and I will not and I have not leaned on the arm of flesh because man, flesh only has limited ability. But I need a power that goes beyond my circumstance. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So let me start right here for a moment to outlay what God gave me about this bathing. Here, I want you to notice that we have a strategy of the devil being played out here on the pages of the Bible. A strategy of the enemy. Say that with me. A strategy of, of Satan. In symbolism, it's being played out right here in the words we read. This king, through his messenger, wants to terrorize God's people by sowing seeds of doubt, both against Hezekiah, their leader, and against their God, the Yahweh of heaven. And I want you to understand that. That the enemy is out doing all he can through his strategy, his strategy to diminish the people of God's faith in the Almighty God. Amen. Diminish your faith. So the king, through his messenger, wants to terrorize God's people by sowing doubt both against Hezekiah and what he's telling the people, and against God, and what God has promised. Amen. He wants to sow seeds of doubt. Amen. Amen. These people of God are surrounded by a vast hostile army who intend to capture them, but the first attack that is launched against them is not with fists and bullets and swords, but it's an attack against their mind. Amen. Saints of God, if you don't hear nothing else Williams has to say, hear this. The enemy wants to get into your head. Amen. Because the devil knows that as a man thinketh in his heart, he will become that. And I want you here today that have a low self-esteem to understand that what's giving you value is not the size of your breast, legs, or hips. It's not how handsome you are, young man, your six-pack. But what gives you value is that God loves you enough to die on the cross. Amen. Low self-esteem, spiritually as well. You are not what the enemy wants you to take that you are. Amen. 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 Come on, y'all, shout amen. amen. You are not defeated. You are more than a conqueror. Yes, yes. You don't go down, but you go. I wish somebody would believe what I'm saying today. You go over and not under. You win. You don't lose. The devil is a liar, but God's word is true. Their thoughts. 
What do you think about God? What do you think about his promises? What do you think about yourself, your abilities? What do you think about me and all of my power that's coming against you? I want to get inside your head. Satan wants the people of God to actually do his work, his desires. Get this with me now. You march in here with this great big army. You outnumber us. You got more power than we have. And yet you come in here talking. You send your messenger to uh, make us all, all these things out to us. What's behind that? See, the, the devil ain't near as bad as we all think he is. Amen. The enemy don't really want to get in a fight with you. He'd rather have you defeat yourself. That's right. That's it, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, somebody. Uh, that you look at on television is another megaphone. 
of, 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 of the devil's uh, fear tactics and spirit of fear. Amen. So, you know, social media, uh, I, I don't know, uh, Facebook, all that. I'm still trying to find out what hashtag means. <laughs> and he sounds it out. And through all of that media, Satan is using fear to motivate people to do things they wouldn't ordinarily do. Amen. How many of you know that fear is a, is a motivating factor so powerful that you can get people to buy stuff they don't really need? Amen. Amen. Yes. People create problems by running in fear. You think I'm lying? Go to the average house and they got toilet paper stacked on the floor to the seat. Because somebody scared them that toilet paper was going to run out. Yes. I had a friend of mine that called me and he said, We're prepared. We got food stored up for, I guess, a year or more. We got this stored up and that stored up. And I thought about that. And I said, I, I, I'm not going to fall for that. Amen. Y'all said, praise the Lord. Praise I don't have to store up. I say, I don't have to store up. Why? Because my father told me, as I sit on his lap, he told me, take no thought for tomorrow. That's it, right? Amen. 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 Verily, thou shalt be fed. I once was young, David said, but now am I old, but never have I seen the righteous forsaken, neither their seed begging bread. Amen. God is my provider. Amen. Can you raise your hand and say, Father, thank you for providing for me. No, it wasn't my job, it wasn't none of that. God, it was you who have provided for me. fear what's going to go on tomorrow or what you're going to do or how you're going to make it through, you let the enemy know, listen, that is not my concern. My father has made a way. My father provides for me. And it is well. Come out of somebody say it is well. In everything. Say it is well. It is well. and fro. 
throw throughout the earth looking for someone to show himself strong on their behalf, whose heart is perfect in his sight. Would you raise your hand and say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Would you say, Lord, I believe. But Lord, well, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Because I want to see your manifestation. I want to see your miracle working power operating in our circumstances and in our situation.
but you can't wait to get home. Well, I'm not back. Don't look at me in that corner, boys. <laughs> and with some Christians, it's not liquor or dope or, or you know, or, or Valium or pills. You know what it is? Mm. 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 Oh, God, I'm so upset. Let me some of that chicken and grills. And for some, it's getting high on people giving you pity. That's what I right. like when folks that testify, they just got to tell what God did. Amen. You ain't got to try to embellish it, blow it all up, but it's still God to glow. Amen. Yes. Yes. Uh, on the way down this morning, a gentleman pulled out in front of me. And I swerved to miss him, and nobody was hurt. Praise the Lord. Praise God. That's a good testimony. Amen. How about this? I was on my way down here today. And the devil came in a red big pickup truck. And he aimed that thing right at me, but God picked my car up. Imagine 
imagination. Mm -hmm. Because once those fearful thoughts get in there, your brain can go to imagining every yeah. possibility yeah. coming to pass. Mm -hmm. And all of that what if doctrine. So you need to search the book. I wish I had wrote that scripture down, but would you try with me a moment to see this Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 34? Uh, I, I think, that, but anyway, praise the Lord, I'll, I'll look it up. Uh, next verse. Look at verse 16 with me, if you will. Oh, yeah, that's it. Verse 11 of our text scripture in Isaiah 36, verse 11. And I'm going to show you a couple of strategies more, and I'm going to let you go. But don't be surprised if I don't delve into this same passage at a later time to bring out more truth to us. Then said Eliakim and Shepherd and Joel unto Rabshakeh, the messenger. Speak, I pray thee, unto thy servants in Syrian language. <laughs> For we understand it. And speak not to us in the Jew, Jewish, Jews language, in the ears of the people that are on the wall. Next verse, please. But Reb Shaka said, Hath my master, the king of Assyria, Sent me to thy master and to thee to speak these words. Have he not sent me to the men that sit upon the wall, that they may eat their own excrement and drink their own? So we got to divide 
things. We got to bring fear in enough people that we can have red states and blue states. That we can stop the Republican Party and the Democratic Party and some of them other we are trying to vote. <laughs> so that we are so dividing and fighting against each other, all motivated by fear. Amen. You got people that are afraid somebody's going to take my wife, somebody's going to take my hood. Let me tell you something.
going to talk. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> See, people want you to deal with stuff on a one-sided, messed up thing. I'm not going to do that. I, but then I, then I, then I, I said, now, who is your love? Call him in here. Then he come walking in.
But you better listen to my threats. Come on, Pastor. Mm -hmm. To my bullying tactics. Hell desires us to pay attention to what the devil is saying. And pay no attention to what God has declared. Don't even trust your God, but hear me and believe and trust my lies. Just give up. Don't keep fighting for your family. Don't keep fighting for your children. Just give up. Well, I'm just going to lose the gold. Oh, don't give up. Amen. Just give up. Maybe that'll be okay. I'll give you a good lifestyle. You can live a pleasant day on earth. And man, you can have a good time. Look over to verse 16 and 17. How the devil tells these lies to us. Hearken not to Hezekiah. On paper, I swear you no attention. For thus said the king of Assyria, make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and eat ye every one of his vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one the waters of his own system. Come on. Come on out of that church stuff. Man, they putting a thumb on you. They trying to tie you down and keep you from living your life and having a good time. Come on, follow me. And man, you will enjoy life. Just give up, give in. Come on. I know it's rough over there trying to live up for what I'm both telling you. Come on out of that mess. And enjoy your own vineyard and wine and fig tree. But wait a minute. There's an until involved here. Until I come and take you away to a land like your own, a land corn and wine, the land of bread and vineyards. That's the lie of the day. Jesus, if you would just bow down and worship me, I'll give you all of this for he has been given unto me and I can give it to whomever I will. And Jesus said, I'm not falling for that lie. Yes, yes. Can y'all so praise the Lord? How many of you know that Jesus came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly? Yes, the enemy promises you life, but the end thereof is death. The Bible says the, the wages of sin following the devil is death. Not only physical death, but eternal death. But the gift of God is eternal death. God commands us to wash our hearts. Now, listen to me real carefully here, if you will. There's so much more that I've got to cover, but the Lord wanted me to start this washing process with the evil thinking and thoughts that have colonized uh, within us, that have captivated our thinking processes and the way we reason things to come to a conclusion. And thereby coming to a conclusion, it affects our walk, our outward dealings with people and with circumstances and with situations. And when I see the attitudes of some folk, I know what they have been attacked with, thoughts, I can see what has colonized in them, and I can see that it has become a part of them when I see them acting it out. Amen. Uh, we're going to get some teaching here real soon. Uh, I took pastoral counsel out at Southeastern University, well, Southeastern Bible College there. And, uh, it, it, it just amazed me that how folk can have traumatic stuff happen to them when they were younger that they never got healed from. That's right. Mm -hmm. Sexual abuse or being mistreated mm -hmm. or being called ugly and stupid or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they just grew up. And now a lot of people walk around will tell you, I knew a movie. <laughs> I wonder where is the Bible in this? 
The Bible says you are beautifully and wonderfully made. And one lady told her daughter, you don't have no right to look down on nobody else. And by God, ain't nobody got the right to look down on you. Amen. Amen. That's the way I live my life. That's That's the way I live my life. Just give up. So in order to change how we live and how we react to people and circumstances and situations, we got to change something on the inside. That's motivating that. I'll come back to that scripture later, but let's go to Jeremiah 4.14 as I come down the close. Oh, Jerusalem, wash thy heart from wickedness that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? Since the enemy has been to a degree successful in sending lodgers, you know, somebody that lodge, you got an apartment for rent. You got a room for rent, and you take a lodger, he comes in, and he or she stays there. God said, Jerusalem, how long are you going to allow vain, evil thinking to come in and lodge with you? Constantly dictating and telling you and threatening you and calling you to fear. And some folks don't have one lodger, they got a whole bunch of lodgers in there. Amen. And if you've got a place where lodgers are and they come in and the first thing you know they've got holes in your walls and they've told you ceiling down, busted your lights, tore up your yard, messed your whole house up, you need to get rid of them lodgers. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, you need to put them out. It's time for eviction right now. And even now, the enemy would try to use those largers to tell you, well, he's just preaching at you now. I don't think like that. I don't care what he said. See, did you just talk like that? By thinking what you just thought. <laughs> David prayed this prayer. He said, Lord, let the, let, let, let the words of my mouth and the, you know you know how you meditate? You know what you use to meditate? And the meditation of my heart be what? Acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. Create within me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Until we could be concerned about the inside, we're going to be messed up. And God says, you look pretty good. You got a good act. I mean, you got all the tapestry of a Christian. You come to church every now and then. You sing the hymns. You pay some money in the offering, you give some tithes and all. You got the good tap, you know, the, the, the trappings of a, of a Christian. And while men are looking on the outside, you, you got some good Bible verses. You can quote stuff real good. Praise the Lord. Or you can name every demon in the book. Sasquatch. Monkey thing. You know, you can name them all. <laughs> Jesus said this. You, you're going to come to me in that day and say, did we not cast out devils in your name? And God goes to the cross me. I never knew you. Why? Because you served me with your mouth, but your heart was far from me. Amen. Amen. So David said, Lord, wow, everybody looking at me from the outside. I'm king, you know. I'm redheaded. I'm, I'm good looking. But God, I know you don't see as men see. Well, they're looking at my outward appearance. But every day, I've got to walk with the reality that you see through all that pretense, all that put on, and you see my heart. Down yonder at Jerusalem at the church, Jesus told a bunch of religious leaders, outwardly, you appear as painted supporters. You've got 
your nice long robes on and everything is in tight. All of your stars and everything is together. But inwardly, you're full of rotting dead men's bones. What comes out of you stinks. Comes out of you stinks. So I don't know about you. I don't want to walk around with rottenness in me. Amen. Stinkiness in me. And I can control... And you can control that because it's in the hidden man. You can control concealing it from people until something comes up. Yeah. And when the enemy, through his messengers, can shake up your Coca-Cola bottle <laughs> and it spews out, then everybody go, woo, oh. <laughs> Because you get ready to fight, get ready to do it, do it. And that is not right. So God says, it's time to get rid of those largers, those tenants. Because what they're doing, they're not paying you anything, but they tear down your structure. They tear down your testimony. They tear down your house. They're causing you to lose the blessings of God. Put them out. Evict them. Starve them out. Don't feed them no more. They're the blessings of the sale.
nearly always coming up to me talking about voodoo and witchcraft. And it just bothers me that Christians who have dedicated their house to the Lord, dedicated themselves to the Lord, will let a voodoo devil come in and possess their children. Or oh, possess their husband. Where, 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 where do you believe what Jesus said? Behold, I give unto you what? That word means authority. You can do more with authority than you can with brute force. Jesus said, I give you unto your authority. In my name, you will drive out demons. Mm -hmm. But demons seem to be driving Christians out of their marriage, out of their home, yeah. out of everything. The devil is a liar. Yeah. Say it, the devil is a liar. Yeah. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I've encountered witches and warlocks in my ministry. I was doing a revival up in here in this Florida, and uh, I got a warning from the pastor. He said, brother, that, that lady over there, she's a witch, and before the services tonight, I see her walk off from the church, and there's some red looking mud that she sprayed all over in here, and uh, I just want to give you a heads up, brother. <laughs> And the enemy would take that statement to cause me to start looking and acting fearful. <laughs> no, sir. Say it with me. No, sir. No, sir. If you can take me, go at it. But I want you to know greater is he that is in me yeah, amen. than he that is in the world. Yeah, yeah. Say, pray the Lord. I've been involved in a wrestling match. God said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right. but against principalities and power. That big fat lady can't do nothing to me physically, but she wants to mess up my mind so that the demonic powers can come in and train my thoughts to defeat and destruction. The yeah. devil is alive. Yeah. Amen. 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 So I walked on in there and brother, we had a revival. Before that revival was over, guess who walked in the door? Well, that was cool then. Here she come. That big old white hat on one side, just right up there. And when she got up there, and I said, yeah, what you want the Lord to do for you? Oh, hit the floor. I hit the floor right on top. You ain't fooling me? Come on out, champ. That's right, brother, before I got into this legislative stuff in the council, before I got into all that stuff that kind of tried to cool me down. But God told me to tell you, it's time now to get the second bread. Amen. I'm looking for an anointing that's going to destroy the yokes. I'm looking for power to be manifested of the will of God. To heal the sick, drive it out the human spirits. And let the world know that God is still alive. God is still well. Miracles are on the way. Breakthrough is on the way. Revival is on the way. Can somebody shout amen in the house? God gonna put some clap back in our hands yeah. and some dance back in our feet. Come on, y'all shout, praise the Lord. Yeah. I'm looking for revival. Yeah. How many of y'all believe revival is already started? Yeah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I'm looking for that time like we had in Chicago when this woman came, Mother Jane was there. This woman came in there, had them. Them, them, them funny looking crutches things. Where you going? And I got to preaching. Hallelujah. And I looked out, brother, and they had shut down the street. Yep. Am I lying, Brother Jay? They had cars blocking that four lane street, and people were sitting on top of their cars. They were leaning on the fence. The tent was full. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And up hops this little lady, and I prayed for her. In Jesus' name, it commanded that demon spirit to loose this woman. And brother, here she started. She started to doing stuff. And I said, oh, we got one of the perversion demons in here. She's trying to strip naked, but God said, hold on for a minute. Watch what she's stripping out of. She stripped out of all them crutches, brother. Took off running down that tent. I 
by Yah. Dogs run through the yard. Amen. Amen. Little bears run through the yard. I'll get up there and never say, oh, uh huh. See somebody in a picture, you folks. Look at all these things running through your yard. Lying, lying. I don't even entertain no thought like that. Amen. Okay. God doesn't bless me because if there's a food shortage, I'm going to eat me some bad. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Say it with me. God is my refuge. You know what a refuge is? 
you run into a refuge for safety. God is my refuge and strength. A very present help. God bless you, brother and sister. God bless you all. A very present help. In what? Oh, y'all don't know about no trouble. Next verse. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, natural disasters, all that stuff. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. So. Look here. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. How many of you know God dwells in me? This is his city right here. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. You, your body is a tabernacle of God. Your mind, your spirit, your soul, all is abiding in peace. Amen. There's a river flowing inside of us. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that, right here. That's Alabama talking. Y'all don't know God was from Alabama, did you? <laughs> the heathen raged. And the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. Say that with me. The Lord of hosts is with me. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Next verse. I know y'all gotta go. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolation he hath made in the earth. I love this. For he maketh wars to cease yeah. unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. I love that verse. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I don't know whether you, you, you know or not, but your heart is being washed now by the washing of the word. And fear, and the, the, those, those hoarders, uh, those uh, uh, people that's been, the, the, those, the, those, those thoughts and, and hoarders and, and, and lodgers that's been lodging around in there, just picture with me that the word of God came in like a, a, a big blasting water hose from a fire truck or something and just washing them out. Because you're going to be free of this fear and doubt and torment and terror. And you're going to learn to trust what God says above what you see in the devil hollering at you. Amen. That's good news to me, y'all. Somebody raise your hand and say, I'm free. Thank God, I'm free. People laying awake at night, terrorized by the devil's what ifs. I don't think so. Proverbs 3.24 says what? Proverbs 3.24. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Uh, I can't think of it right now. E-Z, e e what the Z's, uh, what's that sweet to be called? You don't need it. Amen. Say that with me. I'm going home tonight. I'm going home tonight. I will not be terrorized. I don't need that word about the word if the devil tried to talk to me. That's it. That's it. But I'm going to fall asleep. And my sleep shall be sweet. That's right. Amen. I uh, used to be out. Uh, Sister Lawson, a real late man, preaching with hours. I knew I had to go to work in the truck and I was going to be facing this, like a 20 some hour a day. Sometimes I would get but two or three hours sleep. But man, let me tell you, God can do in two or three hours. Yes. With all the super bills in the world, can't do. Amen. Oh, I love the Lord. You go home tonight. So when you get down on your knees, or if you pray, lay on your back in the bed, that's okay too. But you tell the Lord, God, I receive your word. I'm going to sleep, and my sleep going to be sweet. Amen. Yeah, I said that to the devil. Let the word say one thing. Let the word talk to him. 
against the demon spirits, but he just said simply, the word rebuke you. Mm -hmm. When the pastor said the Lord, then what do you think the Lord is? Amen. He was the word incarnate. Amen. The word rebuke you. The word rebuke you. I'll take this word and cut you down. You've been gotten him. <laughs> How that even matter? When you preach the word to the devil. Sometimes we not only, when we confessing the word, we're not confessing it just to build ourselves up. We confess it because all around us, these demonic forces don't like to hear the word. Amen. Oh, you love gossip. Yes. They love it when you brag it on him. The devil was in that moment and he took it out there. No, he loved that. He said, go ahead and give him my praise. Come on. Some people almost shot when they were talking about the devil. Amen. Well, that devil, he gets something else. Oh, glory. Let me tell you something. Stop doing that. Amen. Amen. And just start talking about the Lord. Amen. Somebody come in and tell you about demons. So, oh, but honey, let me tell you that he's destroyed. He don't have no power over you. Amen. No, you ain't got to fear him. We're running from him. Amen. We're fearing him. Amen. He's defeated. How many of y'all know he's defeated? Amen. Wait a minute. Do you really believe that? Amen. <laughs> And he can't do nothing that you don't allow him to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. And then, I will not be bullied by bad news and driven into panic. I got two more scriptures. And one of them is Psalms 112, verse 7 and 8. Y'all came here for this, right? Amen. So don't look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> he shall not be afraid of what? Turn on the news. That's all right. They won't scare me. Amen. I'm just going to familiarize myself with what's going on in the world. Right. So I know better how to pray. But this ain't going to scare me. Amen. I'm not going to be terrorized. I'm not going to be bullied by this stuff. Right. Some folk are so caught up in that. M N D G, whatever that station is. CNN. Fox News. They come in in the evening, the first thing they do is turn on Fox News and turn on this so that the enemy can pump them with more fear. <laughs> Buy you one of them little, and download an app where you can listen to the Bible. And say, so, you know what, I'm going to replace this news this evening. I'm going to listen to James Lord John read the book of Romans. I didn't get no email. Amen. Amen. Verse 8 says, 112 verse 8, the heart, his heart is established, the righteous man. He shall not be afraid until he sees the desires of others. And God told me to close with this passage right here. Isaiah 12 and verse 2. And I, I'm not going to tell you, before you go to Psalms, would you turn with me, please? To, to a, go, go to Psalms rather, 91. I'm going to read five verses there. Psalms 91. I'm not, I'm not going to apologize to y'all either. <laughs> Psalm 91. <laughs> Begin at verse 1. Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth, never can even find. You know what? Never can even find. Amen. Amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. Of the Almighty. Next verse, please. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Is this good stuff, guys? Amen. Verse 3 Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the noisome of pestilence. I heard somebody testify this morning about how God fought them through the coronavirus when they were working in a very dangerous environment. Surely he shall deliver thee from the noise of the pestilence. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Some people ain't got no shield and buckler because they don't know nothing about the truth. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that fly 
by day. I'm going to stop right there and close with this final one from Isaiah 12. And I want to notice, if you will, verse 2, Isaiah 12 and verse 2.
another couple of moments. Will you just worship with me right now? Oh, we worship you, blessed Lord, blessed Redeemer. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Lord says you came in here one way, but you are not leaving the same. The Lord wants you to realize that something has happened on the inside of you that is revolutionary. Something has taken place inside of you that is very powerful. You are not the same. I want you to agree with that statement right now. I'm not the same. I'm different. I am liberated. I am emboldened. Hallelujah. Come on, say it from your heart right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind is now taking up residence with you. And the largest that have declared lies and fear and doubt and bullying have been ex they've been evicted from your premises right now. The premises of your thoughts and mind in your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, bow your heads and believe with me right now. Yes, Lord. Bow your heads and believe with me right now. Yes, God. Father, I'm praying and believing you, God, that as the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, leaves this building today. Because of what you have done here today, my master, my God, through the proclamation of thy word, Fear is dispelled and boldness is enshrined. Faith is enshrined. Trust in God is enshrined. Colonized in the hearts and minds of all of these that are here. Therefore, God, because of that, Lord, I'm expecting miracles as never before. Kunamana shatabo sote rababasaya. Come on, y'all. Come on now, come on. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Trust is being restored right now in your heart. Come on right now. Andabo Shelebi, Salamah. Boldness has come right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're going to call those things that be not as though they were. You're going to trust God in every circumstance and every situation. You're going to speak God's word and God's going to bring it to pass in a hurry in the name of Jesus. You're going to start laying hands on the sick and they're going to be delivered. Your children shall be delivered because of your faith and your prayers and your boldness in the name of Jesus. Receive what I'm saying today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. No weapons formed against you in any wise prosper, but right now you are going to walk in the victory that God has already won for you. In the name of Jesus, 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 you that are believing for loved ones, I want to tell you right now, keep on holding up your bloodstained banner. Keep on believing and trusting God. The breakthrough is at hand in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. You're socially distanced. Come on, praise the Lord. Can you lift your hands and give God some glory in the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Every broken heart is healed right now. You've suffered things for too many years because of your upbringing. Something traumatic happened in your life. I speak healing to you right now. In the blessed name of Jesus, your thought patterns are changing. Hostility is leaving. The hurt is being dissipated right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 
in the name of the Lord. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. this point on, you'll realize you're in a safe place. You're under the very wings of God. The feathers of the Lord cover thee. The angels of the Lord encamp round about thee. God makes provision for you. You need not worry about your provision. God has that under control. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Compassion is coming back in your heart. A heartfelt compassion for the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. There's a humbling taking place right now. Where you've been trying to exalt self, you're humbling yourself and you're crying out to God. Say, Lord, it's not about me, but it's about you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. And God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Yes, Lord. We give you the honor. Yes, God. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. No debilitating Lord sickness Jesus. or disease shall move you until you have completed your course. And no matter what condition your body is in, God says, my grace is sufficient for you. Father, Boshanda, Baba, Sotela, Baba, Saya. Healing in the body right now. Somebody claim it in the name of Jesus. I know Moshe. The enemy been fighting you with that too long now. It's scaring you with that right now. I command lumps and bumps and all kind of ill feelings and strange things happening in I command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Bethel Gospel Tabernacle Evangelistic and Deliverance Service each Friday night. So we'll be meeting here again this Friday night at 7 o'clock p.m. We thank you so much for your attendance today. Amen. Amen. And let's also keep uh, Sister Michelle Himes, amen, in prayer, the family in prayer, and for the passing of her mother, amen. And with that said, my very ones, you can please stand. In. 